Welcome back. Let's take a look at how to make characters pop by adding vignettes to your pictures. We've already talked about vignettes in how to apply them with Dash Studio with the Tone Mapper setting, but let's have a look at how we can make that happen in Photoshop. I use this trick all the time because it will basically make the outsides of your image a little bit darker while leaving a little bit of a lighter part inside the image. We do this to draw attention to a particular part of the image. That's usually the center, but in a portrait like this, it might not be the exact center. It'll be her eyes, which are here. So I'll show you a trick of how we can make that happen in Photoshop. I'm going to apply this to this particular image as well. I'm just going to leave it open and bring in our next guest here, namely the anthropomorphic hippo by Alessandro. Let's go and bring that in, I think, under renders. There we go, the hippo. I'll open him up. Control zero will make him as big as it can be. And I think the color correction on this image is fine, so we don't need to worry about that. I just want to apply that vignette. And once again, there are many ways of doing this. There's no right or wrong way. There's just the way that works for you and for your application. That's really all there is. I'm going to show you a little trick of how to do this in Photoshop. So we need to have a layer on top of this here, an empty layer, and we're going to fill it with black. We're going to blur it out, and then we're going to go and blend that in. That's kind of the, the way I use it. So on the bottom right, I'm going to select this little plus icon here. That'll create myself a new layer above the hippo. So it's currently empty. There's nothing really happening. The next thing I'll do is I'll create a circular selection. Those are these tools here underneath the little move tool. If you ever see any of these little arrows popping out here, that means when you click it, you'll select this tool that's currently showing. But if you long click on this, then a little context menu pops up that gives you other options. You can also hover. Then Photoshop gives you a little video demonstration of how to use these tools. But if you long click on it and pick the elliptical marquee tool, then you don't make a square or a rectangle, you make a circle. Let's use that. If you left click and drag anywhere in your image, it'll go and draw out a circle with a little ants walking there. It's not a complete circle, it's more like an oval. But if you want to constrain this thing to a circle, hold down the shift key. When you do that, it's a full circle. And you can left click and just make the circle bigger or smaller. It might not be in the position that you wanted it to be in. So if you wanted to, if you have the size of the circle there, but you want to move it now, hold down the space bar on top of the shift key that you're currently holding down. So if you don't do that, then it'll just, it'll just go and go back to this ellipse thing and it'll just go and uh, move the ellipse without changing the size of the ellipse, but it's not a circle, it's not an ellipse. So hold down the shift key to constrain that. Once you add a good point, you can release the space bar and then increase the circle to something like this. It doesn't have to be precise. We're going to go and do a bit of blurring there. I'm just going to eyeball this so that it's kind of in the middle of the picture. But you can see the power of this. You can position this into the portion of the image that the vignette needs to be on. So if his eyes would be much higher up in the image, I could just make the circle around that. In fact, we're going to do that on the surfer. So this has made a selection. So that means if I were to do something on the inside of the circle and I draw over the selection, the outside wouldn't be affected. So currently anything that I want to do is only happening on the inside and not on the outside. I want for my thing to happen on the outside though, so I need to invert my selection. I want the vignette to be applied in this area here. So I'll head over to Select, Inverse or shift Control i that'll do the same thing. And if you look closely, the marching ants are now basically in this part here on the outside, not on the inside. Then that's inverted the selection. I'm going to use another tool in our layer stack here. And mine is open. That's the little paint bucket tool here. Some people call it the flood fill tool. It's also on the letter G. But if yours isn't showing, have a look at the one that might be the gradient or the 3D material drop tool. If either of those is showing, then the paint bucket tool is underneath it. So usually it's the gradient tool. I think that's shown by default. So long click that until this context menu appears here and it shows the paint bucket tool. With that, I can select, I now have a little bucket thing here. And if I'm on this empty layer that we've made, I can go and flood fill that with the color that's currently selected on the outside. 
You might have to do that more than once because the my opacity here wasn't quite set to 100%. So the more often you click, eventually this is going to be all black. If you're currently filling this with a different color and you think, hey, that looks totally ugly, what's happened here? It could be that your color isn't set to black. So Photoshop has this little black and white icon here. This is your foreground color. This is your background color. And you can double click any of these to pick the color that you'd like to draw with or flood fill with. If you wanted to set these back to black and white, you don't have to use this. You can just use this little black and white icon here. Once you click that, these things will be set to black and white. And select black, then your paint bucket tool, and then just go and paint bucket on the outside here until it's completely black. That's what we want. So that's not much of a vignette though. We're going to turn that into a vignette and one that we can go and mess with and blend in as much or as little as we like. Let's hit Control D to get rid of the selection. The same can happen under Select, Deselect, Control D here. And let's turn this layer into a smart object. That's a little bit of a tricky one, but essentially we just go uh, right click on here and choose Convert to Smart Object. And what that'll do is it will give us this little icon here, and it means that whatever I do to this layer now will become non-destructive. doesn't work with all modes, but with many modes in Photoshop, and therein kind of lies the big thing about doing things non-destructively in Photoshop. So with my layer selected, I'm going to go and blur this out. That's another effect that we can apply in Photoshop if we wanted to blur something out, either in a part or overall in the image. In my case, I want to blur this whole mask out. I want, don't want this harsh edge here. I want that to be really blurry. And to do that, we can head over to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. That's not the only blur filter here. We have various other ones, but Gaussian Blur is going to work fine for us. I'm going to go and click that, and then a dialog pops up, and a preview appears. In the dialog, I can set the radius of my blur. And if you look closely, you can just see that the edge is blurring out a little bit. It's not blurry enough for me just yet. So I'm going to go and crank that up either with the slider here. And as soon as you let go, Photoshop recalculates this. And there we go. This is a much nicer vignette now. Or you can type in a number. I might go and try 100 just so that we have something to get started with. I'm going to select OK. That is much closer to the vignette, but it's still very strong. So I can see, I, I can kind of see that this isn't, this doesn't look quite right. So all I need to do now is either make the vignette blurrier, and we're going to talk about how to do that, or I can just make it less intense. And that happens by dropping down the opacity. So much like we have opacity on 3D materials, we have layer opacity in Photoshop. So we can just drop that down a little bit. And that happens here with my layer object selected on the opacity value here. You can either left click and drag the opacity word here, and then that'll change that value. Or you can go and use this little drop down menu here and use a slider, completely up to you. Or you can double click this value here and type in something that you know might work. So maybe 70 might work, or maybe 80. I, I kind of tend to use a variety of all of these things. So it kind of depends on what monitor you're looking at this on. On my washed out monitor here, it looks kind of okay. On my slightly harder contrast monitor, it still looks too strong. So, you know, this is partly why I'm bringing this up. If you now see, hey, this doesn't look quite right. I wish I had made this blur a little bit more intense. Then the good news is we have this as a smart object. So I have this thing here that says Gaussian blur. That is essentially the filter that's applied on top of this. So Photoshop hasn't burnt this in as such, it is calculating this on the fly. And therein lies a big power of Photoshop. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to double click on this Gaussian blur word here. And when I do that, the same blur dialog comes up that we had when we applied the original filter. So if I wanted to make this more blurry, I can just type in 150, for example, or even something like 200. And then I see that the edge is much, much stronger blurred. Or if I'm thinking, hey, I'd like that strong edge, I'd drop it down to 50, then you can see the effect uh, right here. So you can change this value retrospectively. Perhaps I'm going to choose 200, hit OK. And then I'll see that my vignette is kind of getting there. Maybe 80% is still a bit too much. So I'm going to drop this down to kind of 69. There we go. Now, since this is also a layer with an eyeball icon, I can go and click that eyeball icon and show you the before and after. 
So do this as subtle or as pronounced as you like. We can go and drop that down even further, just so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to leave it fairly strong so that you can see the before and the after. So in the after, we really draw the attention to his head rather than the background. Also look what an interesting effect we get on the background that we essentially say, hey, viewer, this is what it's all about. It's a very subtle effect, but we really draw their attention in to where it matters. It's not the hand. It's not the light edges of the background that we want them to look at. It is really his face that is the thing we want to emphasize here. That's a vignette. Let me go and do the same principle on the surfer girl that we've had here previously. Well, actually, I'm going to go and save this out so that you can play with this in case you wanted to have a look at the uh, layer stack. I'm going to give you all these images in there. You can open them with Photoshop, also with Clip Studio Paint or with GIMP. I'm going to call this Hippo PSD and I'll go to the Surfer Girl. Now with her, a central vignette might not work. I mean, we can try this out by just duplicating this layer over to her and we can see what the effect is. Duplicate layer like we've seen before into the document Surfer Too Close. Hit OK. And here it is. Well, actually, it's put in the wrong space. So I can go and left click and drag this above the color correction. Vignette should be the last item in your layer stack. And it's also got the wrong size here. It's not quite big enough. I can just go and make that slightly bigger. Left click and drag. It doesn't have to be precise either, but it's super easy to just make that again. And I'll show you in a moment why. Hit enter. This was with the move tool. And now we have the same vignette applied on our surfer girl without and with. And that already makes a big, big difference. Notice that both the opacity value as well as the filter value, as well as the selection or the vignette fill that we've created have copied over. So very nice without and with. So again, might not work with the same settings here, but yeah, you, you get the picture. You can adjust as you see fit. Now with her, even though this works, I probably would have drawn the vignette so that the center point is not in the middle of the picture, but around her eyes. Let's go do that. Let me go and delete this layer just with the delete key on your keyboard and create a brand new layer, just like we've seen this before. Repetition is the key to learning this. So if this seems overwhelming and a lot, don't worry about it. Watch the video again, try it again and again and again, and eventually you'll pick up all the tips. We're going to create an empty layer above here on the top of my layer stack. I'm going to go back to my circular marquee selection. I'm going to go and left click and drag. Might make that something like this. I'm going to go really subtle here. And I want to make sure this is the center point of attention here, her face. Remember what happens next? We're inverting the selection. Select inverse. Therefore, the outside can be filled with stuff that we get with the paint bucket tool. Click on that. And outside here, I'll click that once or twice until it's completely black. Remove the selection or deselect everything with Control D. And now we're going to go and turn this into a smart object. And we're going to do that because it means whatever blur value we decide on, we can change later non-destructively. That's the power of Photoshop. Right click on this. Oh yeah, actually right click on this part of the layer, not on the actual thumbnail. If you do that, then there's no convert to smart object here. You have to do this on here where it, where it says layer, where the layer title is. So right click on this and say convert to smart object. I've made that mistake many times when I got started with Photoshop and it's really annoying when you think I could have sworn it was here. One of those things. So you select that, then you head over to filter, blur, and pick basically any of these filters can be applied that way. Well, most of these filters can be applied that way. I'm going to stick with the Gaussian blur, but do feel free to try out any of the others like motion blur, radial blur, shape blur. They're all very, very cool filters there. So Gaussian blur. And that menu comes up. 200 might work. We can drop it down and see what that looks like. That's too strong. 200 was probably good. 300 might be a little much. But then, yeah, actually, it might work. It might work. Depends on how subtle you want to be. I'm going to go with maybe 300. Let's do that. Hit OK. And now we're emphasizing her face too much. And now, next step, we're going to drop down the opacity to something more subtle, like so. 
And then we have it before and after. If you now feel with the vignette, hey, I really like the vignette effect, but I now feel that the rest of the picture is almost too dark because all this here has been darkened off. Then you can go ahead into your color correction stack, open that group up and go back to the brightness and contrast layer here, for example, or you can use an exposure layer or something else. And then you can go and crank up the brightness a little bit. And then you can basically recorrect that. So it's a bit like when you're setting lights and then you put another light and you have to recorrect that light and so forth. And now we have something like this. So that is very nice. So if I compare that to what we had before, let me go and put the vignette to the top of the color correction stack here. Just left click and drag that into the groove like so. Not like this, but like this. Then it's at the top of that. What this does is now it gives me one eyeball icon here that I can enable and disable so I can show you what happens when all these effects are applied or not applied. Let's do that before and after. That's quite a change that we've made to the image. And I have to say for the better, I really, really appreciate what we've made with, with this image that was kind of okay. It's now really good. So, you know, it might not be perfect, but go ahead and play around with it. You could emphasize the eyes by brightening them up with the dodge and burn tools. You can desaturate images with the sponge tool or resaturate certain other parts also with the sponge tool. There's so much stuff you can do in Photoshop and we're barely scratching the surface and we're also going through this at, at quite a fast pace. So there we go before and after. Same with the hippo here. That was before and after. So once again, you could go ahead and add the color correction stack to this guy now as well. Let's just quickly do that. If I go and select my hippo layer down here and then go ahead and create, let's try exposure this time. That's another way of increasing the brightness or decreasing the brightness. Same principle applies. With that layer selected, I've got under the properties menu here, I can increase the exposure now make it a bit brighter. I can also apply a gamma correction if I wanted to do that all in Photoshop. Let's do that. And now that I've got all my corrections in place, I can go and shift select all of these and drag them into a group just so that we tidy up the layer stack. Left click and drag all of them into the group here. Double click it and call it corrections. For example, you can call it anything you like. And now we have one eyeball icon that says before and after. So not bad what we did retrospectively here. We're going to continue with this principle in the next lesson in which I'm going to show you how to replace a background or to basically to create a background from scratch and add it behind your Dash Studio characters. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.